tell me, to start off, you've been giving a series of lectures here. Uh, for those of us who didn't attend, what were the main ideas that you were trying to get across? Well, I wanted to give a broad spectrum of topics in which interpreting research and translation research interact, as well as one topic which was specifically devoted to interpreting, actually two. Um, so on the first day, I spoke about interdisciplinarity, which included both the um, interdisciplinarity of translation studies with other disciplines and what I called intra-subdisciplinarity, which is the relationships between translation studies and interpreting studies. Okay, so we should note that you're a researcher in interpreting studies. Primarily. From, okay. And then the second day I spoke about uh, corpus-based research. And the third day I spoke about community interpreting. Mm -hmm the theory and practice of community interpreting. Is, is that a field you've done research in as well? Uh, it? More, I, I've done some research. Primarily, I've been teaching it and observing students performing it. So if you call that research, sure, observational yeah. research, yeah. I suppose I have. And I spoke about um, teasing apart the variables in interpreting research, which has to do with methodology. And finally, yesterday, I spoke about the conundrum of quality in translation and interpreting research. So those were the five topics, and they run the gamut from the more specific to the more general. Okay. Would they be the general areas in which you've developed ideas of use to interpreting research? Or not are there exactly. more specific things as well? Yeah, not exactly, because those are very broad headings. Um, when it comes to interpreting research, I started out as a babe in the woods trying to figure out what there was to say about interpreting uh, very, a very long time ago, about 20 years ago, and eventually my, my MA had to do with uh, stylistic features of interpreting and how interpreting affects the output, or rather the differences between the interpreted output and the translated output with respect to various features such as orality of the text and so on. But then I moved on to other aspects of interpreting so that I looked into things like intonation because I had observed as a practicing interpreter that interpreters speak differently mm -hmm. when they're interpreting than when they're not. And they speak differently from normal speakers. So I did some research into that. I also did some research on cohesion in interpreting mm -hmm. to see where cohesion tends to break down, primarily in simultaneous interpreting, less so in consecutive. I've also done research on cognitive processes so that my PhD was about working memory strategic allocation of attention and working, working memory in simultaneous interpreting, and that was a controlled experiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I moved on to certain settings, such as uh, court interpreting, which is something that I've done, theater interpreting, which is also something that I've done, and lately community interpreting, so that my focus now is more on social settings. And uh, that's about it. And of course, I, I, as an editor of a journal that is devoted to interpreting or the interpreting studies which is I, called which is called interpreting colon uh, international journal of research and practice in interpreting mm -hmm. uh, founded in 1996 originally edited by barbara moser mercer and don massaro and in recent years co-edited by uh, franz perschacker and myself uh, as co-editor of that journal um, i am preoccupied with the meta discourse of interpreting but primarily with how we talk about interpreting in general and about interpreting in relation to translation in particular, and various research areas that touch upon interpreting. Okay. Before we get back to that, I'd like to go back. You did your MA at... 89. Right. Prior, but when you were in your early 20s or so, where were you? You're American. I was born in the States, right. yes. So where were you then when you were... <laughs> finding your way in the world. <laughs> well, I came to Israel at 17 when okay. I finished house, high school. I came to Israel to study medicine, so I studied musicology, yeah. and that's why I'm a translator. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, having done that, having received my BA in linguistics and musicology, after that I had a few children, and then I decided that I need to figure out what I'm going to do next. And just then the translation department opened at bar -Ilan University. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yet an MA conferring department, it was a diploma program. I signed up for that and I realized that what I really wanted to do in life was to be a translator. Not, not interpreter. Well, initially that's, that's I didn't really even know, but very yeah. soon after I started studying interpreting, I realized that I wanted to do that as well. Okay. Not exclusively, to this day I'm also a translator. Mm -hmm. And in some respects I prefer translation to interpreting, although I prefer, I mean, they're different. Mm. So each one of them has its attractions and its drawbacks. 
So in my early 20s, I, I, um, I started my MA. I, I went to Tel Aviv University. I went to Gideon Turi uh, at the translation, or he was actually at the uh, School of, Con of, uh, Liter of, what was it called, Literary Theory, I think. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called. And uh, I said I wanted to do a, an MA on interpreting. He said he didn't know much about interpreting, but he was willing to learn and to see how it interfaced with translation studies. And I kind of figured it out for myself to an extent, although, of course, he, he guided me and helped me. Mm -hmm. But I initially thought that nothing had ever been done on interpreting, and then I started discovering that a lot had been done. The MA, MA which I've read, wasn't published as such. No. Why not? First of all, I got involved in other things, and secondly, I thought it was too specific to be of interest. You know, it was very specific. And it could be summed up in an article. I, I even, yeah. even the article that I wrote just appeared in some esoteric Israeli journal, so it could at least have been summed up in some uh, more mainstream um, publication. But I wasn't so publication conscious in those days. I wasn't even yet involved in the, you know, in the academic track. You've done a lot of research over the years. Yeah. You've been associated with a lot more. Mm -hmm. You haven't done a book that signed Miriam Schlesinger. That's true, and you've, it's been bugging me lately. You've been editing journals and doing the hard work. I've been figuring out what I want to do when I grow up, you see. <laughs> okay. and in the process, I've been editing. I've been doing, I've been a pr practitioner all my life, so I've been translating yeah. a lot. Yeah. I did a lot yeah. of court interpreting and interpreting Is that hard and teaching. To do, to do academic work and professional work and teaching. It's thrilling. It's hard and in children. the sense that they're, and children. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard in the sense that there are only 24 hours in the day and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I desperately need another few. Uh, and, um, but otherwise, it's very invigorating. I mean, practice feeds into research. Research feeds into practice. And even when I'm interpreting, you know, interpreters have two tracks, the source language and the target language, but I have a third track of looking at what I'm doing while I'm interpreting, you know, mm -hmm. so we're always kind of being the observer researcher while also practicing. I have many times wanted to sit and do a book, but I haven't yet. Your, your, your name is on target for many there as style editor, I believe, mm -hmm. which means you've been doing a lot of editing, yeah. a lot of giving to other people's work. It also means that your English is incredibly elegant. <laughs> For the Norman <laughs> translation <laughs> study. Thank you. Okay. Um, has that been rewarding, do you think, over the years? Because you've been with Target from the beginning, I think. Is it? Well, Target has always been, you know, it's, I, I just kind of take it for granted because I've been with it from the beginning because Gideon and I, you know, are like within five minutes of All each right. other geographically and it's been convenient. And, I mean, if there were, I, I probably won't go on doing that for much longer, but it's kind of been something that I just take in stride. And, of course, I get the privilege of uh, reading other everyone else's work even before it's published, and every now and then that comes in handy. Mm -hmm. Editing other people's work is rewarding, just as um, going over t uh, students' work is rewarding, which I do masses of because I have a lot of uh, research students. But, of course, it would be nice to have more work of one's own. Yeah. But I've, I've published a lot of articles, but I haven't done a book, as you said. There's said. time. Yeah, this time. One really final question, I guess, almost final. Um, we talk about the Tel Aviv School in translation studies. Is that a good name? And did you go to school there? <laughs> well, the Tel Aviv School, I think, is used in both senses of the word. First of all, the institution yeah. itself, and secondly, in terms of a school of thought. In terms of the institution itself, I studied there in the 80s, and it was fine. I can't really say much about it today because I'm not directly affiliated with it anymore. In terms of, um, you know, in terms of the more philosophical term, mm -hmm. Tel Aviv School, of course, it, it, it generated so much. Uh, so I have nothing but admiration for it. But personally, I'm affiliated with a different university. Also, the right, Tel Aviv School... I, I think in that metaphorical sense. Yeah, the, the, right, the, uh, right. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, yeah. the Tel Aviv School had not much to say about interpreting. So everything yeah. that I've done with interpreting, I mean, I draw upon it, and I have polysystem theory in my background, and I have, of course, norms and so on in my background. But it, it, the, the relationship is more indirect. Okay. And a very blunt question. Is interpreting part of translation? Ah, for Anthony. But of course. Of Not course. everybody will say oh, this. So. Yes. Well, interpreting as a practice is certainly part of translation as a practice. Translation with a capital C, translation, uh, capital T. Yeah. Translation as a generic 
translation uh, can be subdivided into the subgeneric translation studies in the sense of written and interpreting studies in the sense or interpreting in the sense of oral. Of course, it's part of it, and like any subdiscipline, it has certain salient features that set it apart. But it also has those overriding, common denominator right. features which put it together with written translation. And personally, I find that I draw upon my experience in written translation. It helps me in interpreting and vice versa. You mentioned that the recent research is on community uh, or looking at social contexts. Is that the way you see research headed in the future years, or is there some other paradigm approaching us? Well, I'm always afraid when we go so far in one direction that we neglect another. For example, at conferences I've been at lately, almost no one has spoken about anything to do with linguistics. It's mm, as though we've yeah. forgotten that translation has to do with linguistics. Yeah. So you shouldn't go to one extreme at the risk or at, uh, you know, at the cost of neglecting the other. Community interpreting has come into its own, just as interpreting studies has come ins into its own, and it is definitely the new kid on the block. And precisely because it has been so long neglected, even though it's the most ancient form of translation in a way, uh, it's being rediscovered. I would love to say that research into community interpreting is actually affecting what's happening in real life. Mm. I can't really say that yet. Not yet. Not yet. I hope eventually something, some interface does evolve. Good. So that would be a, an ideal short-term future. Yeah, I'd like research to contribute to society and not just to draw upon it, you know. So okay. that's where we're going. Very good. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.